geared to pillory. John F. Kennedy knew the dangers of getting lost in the past. He radically distinguished his presidency from that of his predecessor, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and also from the preceding decade, the 1950s, which Eisenhower personified. Kennedy, for instance, would not play the dull and fatherly game of golf, a symbol of retirement and privilege and Eisenhower's passion. Instead, he played football on the White House lawn. In every aspect, his administration represented vigor and youth, as opposed to the stodgy Eisenhower. Kennedy had discovered an old truth. The young are easily set against the old, since they yearn to make their own place in the world and resent the shadow of their fathers. Never let yourself be seen as following your predecessor's path. If you do, you will never surpass him. You must physically demonstrate your difference by establishing a style and symbolism that sets you apart. When General Douglas MacArthur assumed command of American forces in the Philippines during World War II, an assistant handed him a book containing the various precedents established by the commanders before him, the methods that had been successful for them. MacArthur asked the assistant how many copies there were of this book. Six, the assistant answered. Well, the general replied, you get all those six copies together and burn them, every one of them. I'll not be bound by precedence. Anytime a problem comes up, I'll make the decision at once, immediately. Adopt this ruthless strategy toward the past, burn all the books, and train yourself to react to circumstances as they happen. You may believe that you have separated yourself from the predecessor or father figure, but as you grow older, you must be eternally vigilant, lest you become the father you had rebelled against. Finally, plenitude and prosperity tend to make us lazy and inactive. When our power is secure, we have no need to act. This is a serious danger, especially for those who achieve success and power at an early age. You must be prepared to return to square one psychologically, rather than growing fat and lazy with prosperity. Pablo Picasso could deal with success, but only by constantly changing the style of his painting, often breaking completely with what had made him successful before. How often our early triumphs turn us into a kind The effect contains great power because it operates on the most primitive emotions. There are four main mirror effects in the realm of power. The neutralizing effect. This is the essence of the neutralizing effect. Do what your enemies do, following their actions as best you can, and they cannot see what you are up to. They are blinded by your mirror. Their strategy for dealing with you depends on your reacting to them in a way characteristic of you. Neutralize it by playing a game of mimicry with them. The tactic has a mocking, even infuriating effect. Most of us remember the childhood experience of someone teasing us by repeating our words exactly. After a while, usually not long, we wanted to punch them in the face. Working more subtly as an adult, you can still unsettle your opponents this way. Shielding your own strategy with the mirror, you lay invisible traps or push your opponents into the trap they planned for you. The Narcissus Effect Gazing at an image in the waters of a pond, the Greek youth Narcissus fell in love with it. And when he found out that the image was his own reflection and that he therefore could not consummate his love, he despaired and drowned himself. All of us have a similar problem. We are profoundly in love with ourselves. But since this love excludes a love object outside ourselves, it remains continuously unsatisfied and unfulfilled. The Narcissus effect plays on this universal narcissism. You look deep into the souls of other people, fathom their inmost desires, their values, their tastes, their spirit, and you reflect it back to them making yourself into a kind of mirror image. Your ability to reflect their psyche gives you great power over them. They may even feel a tinge of love. This is simply the ability to mimic another person, not physically, but psychologically, 
and it is immensely powerful because it plays upon the unsatisfied self-love of a child. Normally, people bombard us with their experiences, their tastes. They hardly ever make the effort to see things through our eyes. This is annoying, but it also creates great opportunity. If you can show you understand another person by reflecting their inmost feelings, they will be entranced and disarmed. All the more so because it happens so rarely. No one can resist this feeling of being harmoniously reflected in the outside world, even though you might well be manufacturing it for their benefit and for deceptive purposes of your own. The moral effect: the power of verbal argument is extremely limited and often accomplishes the opposite of what is intended. As Gracian remarks, the truth is generally seen, rarely. Heard. The moral effect is a perfect way to demonstrate your ideas through action.